Distinguished guests, tonight is a special night. As I stand in front of you, I'm reminded of the famous words by Sir Isaac Newton, a physicist, mathematician, inventor, and natural philosopher who said, if I've seen further, it is by standing upon the shoulders of giants. There is a story behind this famous quote, that it is from a letter written by Newton to a fellow scientist, Robert. The phrase is understood to mean that if Newton had been able to discover more about the universe than others, then it was because he was working in the light of discoveries made by fellow scientists, either in his own time or earlier. However, there is some suggestion that the phrase may also have some sarcastic undertone. Some historians report that Robert began to disagree with, with a number of Newton's theories, and Robert himself was unfortunately reportedly cut short in height. Whether there's some truth to the argument, it is not certain, but quite a fitting quote for the evening. The awards have an established set of medals to recognize outstanding science. To start tonight's medal presentations, I would like to invite Dr. Mungesi Mluli, the Chief Research Operations Officer of the SAMRC, to present the award for de developing capacity in challenging circumstances. Uh, good evening. Uh, please don't ask me what are challenging circumstances. However, I will tell you about the award. Uh, We've got two awardees. The first awardee is Professor Eunice Siakwe. Uh, but before Prof comes to the stage, can you please watch the bio first? Professor Eunice Siku is the Dean of the Faculty of Health Sciences at the University of Forte. She is Director of Albertina Sisulu Executive Leadership Program in Health and the Vice Chairperson of South African FEMA Regional Institution. She sits on the editorial board of the Journal of Nursing Midwifery as well as the University of Fort Hare's papers. Her research areas of expertise include mentoring for sustainable rural community resilience, mentoring and leadership, health services quality and patient satisfaction as well as policy evaluation. She was the founder of the Academic Leadership Development Academy in 2011. She won the Business Women Association Achievers Award and received the University of Free State's Chancellor's Distinguished Award Cum Laude category in 2016. Thank you, uh, Program Director and, and all protocol observed. I would like to take this opportunity to uh, just say a few words uh, and respond to, the, to, the, to, the, to this award. I am deeply honored to have been selected uh, and accepted the 2017 uh, Silver Medal Award. I am one of the women who made their marks in providing leadership in research at the University of Fordham. I should admit I was a bit stunned when I learned about my nomination. I can tell that each of the women or the nominees in my category were worthy of receiving this award. It is the recognition of my hard work during the more than 20 years in the healthcare profession and in higher education and training. My story uh, of, su of success started in October 1994 when I accepted the position of a junior lecturer at the University of, Fort of uh, Free State in the School of Nursing in a project uh, funded by Kellogg Foundation. Uh, in August 2010, I accepted the position of Head of the uh, Department of Nursing Science at the University of Fort uh, The department which the university wanted to close because of lack of profitability was turned around and resulted into a School of Health Sciences in 2012. In 2015-2016, uh, the Faculty of Health Sciences with five departments, four research units and an Institute of Health Sciences empowered and capacitated a team of academics and students uh, to lead to increase in financial uh, and material sustainability, including involvement of local and international stakeholders. This became the sixth uh, faculty of uh, health sciences, 
which the university became proud of and it was uh, uh, one of the, 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 the marks of celebrating its 100 years. A major part of my responsibility was to raise funds and to establish a culture of research which was non-existent. I established a research niche area titled Mentoring for Sustainable Rural Community Resilience. A breakthrough came when the newly appointed CEO and President of SAMRC, Professor Glenda Gray, uh, whose vision was to transform and, and focus on building research capacity of academics in historically disadvantaged universities. I'm thankful to God, the Almighty, who brought me this far. The evaluation of the 2012 Integrated School Health Research and has a team of researchers and administrators, and I'm glad for the opportunity of working with such a great team. A special thanks goes to SAMRC team, especially my mentor, Dr. Johan Lowe, uh, Dr. Aniza de Villiers, who really supported us a lot in carrying out this research. You made this journey of nomination for this award so special. I cherish, I will cherish it for the rest of my life. My gratefulness goes to my late grandmother and father, and my mother who's there, who valued education. My mother always made a statement when nobody believed in her vision of, a future as, of our future as children. She always said, I wanted you to be better than me. Emphasizing the importance of education, humbleness, forgiveness, kindness to other people, all these contributed to my ability to build and lead a great team like the one that I have. A special appreciation goes to my caring husband, who is with me there, and our three wonderful children. I also want to thank all my students, who reminds me that uh, it's important to grow a faculty of health sciences and to grow research in health sciences. And I'm glad I can say this. It is a great honor for me to stand in front of you, outstanding South African Medical Research Council, for making this world a better place, especially for women in research in Bogodo. Just like Professor Sekri, I'm also better than my parents. <laughs> the next nominee, or the next awardee for this um, award, is Professor Zora Lamini. Professor Zodwa Lamini is the current Deputy Vice-Chancellor of Research, Innovation and Engagements at Mango Sutu University of Technology. She's also a full professor in molecular medicine and a specialty is on molecular oncogenomics. She's also an academic executive with postdoctoral experience encompassing undergraduate, postgraduate and postdoctoral teaching and supervision with extensive research experience spanning both historically advantaged and disadvantaged higher education institutions. She has a sustained international scientific standing, evidenced by publications in international journals. Professor Lamini is a distinguished member of the Council of Scientific Advisors of the International Center for Genetic Engineering and Biotechnology, a fellow of the Royal Society of Medicine, a member of the Academy of Science of South Africa, and a member of the Department of Higher Education's Training Research Outputs Main Evaluation Panel. Professor Lamini's research interests lie in understanding the molecular basis of HIV-related cancers and the discovery of molecular markers for precision prevention and targets for the development of new therapeutics. She served as a deputy chairperson of the board of the South African Medical Research Council. Good evening. I must say, I wasn't prepared to give a speech <laughs> because previously I've never seen what is giving speeches. But, <laughs> but I'm, I'm very, I must say, I'm very honored to get this award. And this award goes to my late parents who gave me the genes 
<laughs> of resilience uh, because and my kids which I really which grew up without me being present because I was traveling doing science and those kids are like kids of a snake <laughs> they looked after themselves but <laughs> <laughs> But ye yes, I'm also very grateful to everybody who's been in my life for the support they've given me. Uh, it's, it's for my students, my postgraduate students also. I have a lot of postgraduate students. Some of them have gone to be associate professors. There's one over there, Professor Raymond Mutati was a, an associate professor at the University of um, Northwest North University. Also, I wouldn't be here if it was not, from the background where I'm coming from, if, if it was not the funding that I got as early as Standard 6. I had scholarship from there onwards until now. And it is my, my resilience, my hard work, and the support of my family that has gotten me this far. And I'm thankful to the MRC for creating this opportunity for health scientists to, to prosper and do their work and to provide funding that has never been provided before, even for the people uh, who come from disadvantaged backgrounds. So thank you very much. Congratulations, Professor Famini and Professor Siku, and thank you, Dr. Mbluli. Silver medals are awarded to up-and-coming scientists who have made scientific contributions within 10 years of receiving, receiving a PhD or MMA. Professor Rachel Jukes, our executive scientist, research strategy, will be presenting the silver medals. Good evening everyone. I'm delighted to have this task tonight because this is an incredibly important category of medals. These are our scientists who are established scientists but they still represent the science of our future rather than the science of achievement over our lifetime. And it's the future of science that's so important in this country. So my first task this evening is to give an award to Professor, Professor Bavesh Khanna. Professor Bavesh Khanna is the head of the Wirtz University node of the DST NRF Center of Excellence for Biomedical TB Research, an associate professor in the School of Pathology at the Wirtz Faculty of Health Sciences, research associate at Caprisa, and a member of the BRICS TB Research Network. Professor Khanna studies TB with a focus on identifying new drug targets and biomarkers to monitor treatment responses and risk of TB disease recurrence. His work attempts to address fundamental questions regarding pathogenesis and clinical manifestation of tuberculosis with a specific emphasis on studying bacteria that are difficult to treat using antibiotics. He was awarded the CEO Titan Award for South Africa, the SADC region and the African continent, the Wirtz Enterprise Innovators Award. He was also appointed as a Howard Hughes Medical Institute International Early Career Scientist and selected as one of the top 200 young South Africans by the Mail and Guardian. Professor Khanna has been admitted to the Academy of Science of South Africa. The second awardee is Professor Penny Moore. <laughs> Pro 
Professor Penny Moore is an honorary senior scientist at the Center for the AIDS Program of Research in South Africa, CAPRISA. She is also a research chair in Virus Host Dynamics and Reader Adverts and National Institute for Communicable Diseases of the National Health Laboratory Service. Professor Moore's research over the past decade has provided a roadmap for the development of broadly neutralizing antibodies required for an HIV vaccine. She is internationally recognized for her research defining the immunological arms race that leads to such antibodies. Her research team showed, for the first time, how the evolving HIV swarm in infected donors plays a major role in the evolution of these broadly neutralizing antibodies. Professor Moore's research focused in areas most impacted by the HIV epidemic has thus significantly contributed to the HIV vaccine field. She is a founding member of the South African Young Academy of Science, an NRF B3 rated scientist, a full member of the American Society for Virology and a member of the Academy of Sciences of South Africa. tonight is Professor Bronwyn Myers. Professor Bronwyn Myers is a Chief Specialist Scientist in the Alcohol, Tobacco and Other Drug Use Research Unit at the South African Medical Research Council. She's also an honorary professor at Department of Psychiatry and Mental Health at UCT. She's a clinical psychologist with an internationally competitive clinical research portfolio focused on developing, testing, and implementing a new interventions for substance use disorders and co-occurring mental and physical health problems in community and health settings. Her research aims to reduce the large treatment gap that exists in low- and middle-income countries and to improve the quality of life for vulnerable, underserved populations. Professor Myers has successfully managed large grants and disseminated results in the form of academic publications and via translating research findings into practice and policy improvements. She has published more than 130 peer-reviewed journal articles with an H index of 24. Her research findings have led to minimum standards and clinical guidelines developed for South African MNS services and MNS interventions being implemented in emergency services. Her expertise in mental health and substance use disorder services research has been recognized through invitations to participate in international reference groups on HIV and injecting drug use, WHO working groups on the strengthening of global substance abuse treatment services and the Scientific Advisory Board for Harm Reduction International. Professor Myers is a recipient of International Congress of Psychologists Change Fellowship for Research with Social Impact. And, and our fourth silver awardee tonight is Dr. Nesri Padiachi. Dr. Nesri Parayachi is an epidemiologist and a deputy director at the Center for the AIDS Program of Research in South Africa, CAPRISA. She is also an honorable lecturer at the School of Public Health at the University of KwaZulu-Natal. She has more than 30 years of clinical trial and research experience in the management of TB and related co-infections with a special interest in drug-resistant TB. Dr. Parayachi is the principal investigator and co-principal investigator of self-initiated TB HIV clinical trials and has published in this field in peer-reviewed journals. She is a TB activist and her vision is to reduce the suffering of patients with drug-resistant TB. Dr. Parayachi served as the South African Principal Investigator for the Columbia University Southern African Fogarty AIDS International Training and Research Program, the South African National and Provincial Advisory Boards for MDR-TB, 
as well as the International Union Against TB and Lung Diseases Ethics Advisory Group. She sits on the board of the South African HIV Clinician Society and has been an ASAF member since 2014. She is also advisor for the India TB Research Consortium. Dr. Padayachi has mentored over 100 undergraduate and postgraduate students. Thank you for the presentation of the Silver Medal, Professor Rachel Jukes, and congratulations to the recipients. Our next medal category are the Gold Medal Awards. Gold Medal Awards are awarded annually to established senior scientists who've made seminal scientific contributions that have impacted on the health of people, especially those living in developing countries. Last year's winners include Professor Charles Perry, Director of the SAMRC's Alcohol, Tobacco, Drug Use Research Unit, and Professor Gita Ramji, Director of the SMRC's HIV Prevention Research Unit, and Caroline Williamson at UCT's Institute of Infectious Disease and Molecular Medicine. Professor Jeffrey Mpatlele, our Vice President for Research, will present the gold medals. Just want to make sure I get it right. Eh? <laughs> um, it is my privilege um, to call upon the first awardee, who is Professor Soraya Sidet, to come and receive the award. Professor Soraya Sedet is Executive Head of the Department of Psychiatry at Stellenbosch University and is a Distinguished Professor of Psychiatry at the Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences at Stellenbosch University. In a capacity as Research Chair in Post-Traumatic Stress Disorder, she manages the Post-Traumatic Stress Disorder Research Program, which includes a large cohort of Masters, PhD and postdoctoral students, and a clinical staff. Professor Sedat also manages a South African Medical Research Council flagship study, Shared Roots, as well as the Fetal Alcohol Syndrome Epidemiological Research Study. In addition, she co-directs the SAMRC's unit on anxiety and stress disorders. She has received a number of accolades throughout her career, but in the last five years has been awarded with the Chancellor's Award for Research by Stellenbosch University in 2017 the Vice Rector's Award for Researchers in 2016, an award for Distinguished Professor of Psychiatry also in 2016, the Rector's Award for Outstanding Research in 2015, and the Distinguished Women in Science Award by the Department of Science and Technology in 2013. Uh, the next awardee um, is Professor Gerard Wiles. <music> Professor Gerard Wiles is the Executive Head of the Department of Biomedical Sciences at the Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences at Stellenbosch University. Professor Waltz's research focuses on the immunology of Mycobacterium tuberculosis, MTB infection, and in particular host biomarkers, including diagnostic markers, markers of TB treatment response, and markers of protective immunity against MTB. He leads the Stellenbosch University Immunology Research Group, part of several international consortia, and conducts recruitment of large cohorts of participants with well-characterized MTB infection and disease phenotypes of to search for biomarkers of TB. He is also head of the Division of Molecular Biology and Human Genetics, Department of Biomedical Sciences at Stellenbosch University. Professor Waltz is Distinguished Professor at Stellenbosch University, Director at the National Research Foundation, Department of Science and Technology Center of Excellence for Biomedical Tuberculosis Research. He was bestowed the Rector's Outstanding Research Award in 2009 and again in 2012 at Stellenbosch University. The 
last awardee is Professor Annalise Williams. Professor Annalise Williamson holds a research chair in vaccinology at the University of Cape Town. She is internationally recognized for her work in vaccinology and the development of new vaccines, as well as for her research in the field of human papilloma virus, HPV. She led the SAMRC-funded program that received two locally developed HIV vaccines into clinical trials and continues to work on novel HIV vaccines. Professor Williamson's present research is aimed at providing data to support HPV vaccine introduction in South Africa, as well as understanding the factors influencing infection and persistence of HPV. She has also developed a specific interest in the impact of HIV infection on HPV and has established her lab as an important world center of expertise in the area. She was elected as a member of the Academy of Science of South Africa in 2004 Fellow of the Royal Society of South Africa in 2005 and a Fellow of the University of Cape Town in 2009. In 2010, Professor Williamson was awarded the Cancer Association of South Africa Cancer AG Oddly Memorial Medal for work on the human papilloma virus, which is the leading cause of cervical cancer. Um, so first of all, we want to say we're very grateful to have your presence here and that you should, um, they are our funders and they give us generous <laughs> support. And, um, and it wasn't for them, quite frankly, um, the MRC wouldn't be prospering. So we really do appreciate and acknowledge your support and thank you for coming. So, so the MRC always likes to um, acknowledge the great scientists that we have. And um, every year we look and, and, and try and see to make, uh, try and see who we have left out and who we need to bring in and who we need to acknowledge. And we have this category um, that is called the Special Award um, that was created actually by Slim. Slim created the, the President's Special Award uh, many years ago to acknowledge um, people that have made a spectacular contribution to me. Medical science. Public health surveillance and research. So now Lucille is a very special person. Um, she has worked tirelessly to improve the health of populations and individuals in South Africa beyond our borders as well. As we know, Lucille is an exceptional and dedicated epidemiologist with an immense breadth of knowledge, which, is, which, which has, um, and she has dedicated herself to keeping the public protected. Protected, it's true, she keeps the public protected in South Africa and informed about the various infected disease threats. So she's part of the life. If you've ever heard her on 702, or read her book, she's very entertaining. And people are always informed to hear about the SARS outbreak, Ebola, the stereosis. And, and you see, not only is a, is a wonderful epidemiologist, but she also is able to, to capture um, the, the, the population, the citizens of South Africa who, who love listening to her on, on the radio. She did officially retire from the NRCD um, a few years ago, um, but she stayed on as a consultant and has continued at her unstoppable pace. And that is not an understatement. She thinks that she is completely unstoppable for all of you who know her. She's called by the NRCD and the NHS as a one stop woman emergency operation. <laughs> so, you know, a mango uh, woman. So, following the SARS outbreak in 2002, Lucille led the establishment of the Outbreak Response Unit at the NRCD. And this, this Outbreak Response Unit has been responsible for solving, solving, it's like being a student, uh, being a, a detective, solving the outbreaks in South Africa.
understand and, and check uh, um, in, um, disease outbreaks in South Africa. Uh, as the president of the Infectious Disease Society, there are a lot of presidents in South Africa, so she's one of them. So when she was the president of the Infectious Disease Society, she led the establishment of, sub of the subspecialities of infectious diseases in South Africa. And before this, um, infectious diseases um, you know, was well recognized that it was never a subspeciality. And so we have people like this uh, to thank for understanding the importance of infectious diseases and to make sure that it's a subspeciality in South Africa. And she has mentored many students and registrars in travel and tropical medicine and is recognized globally as a leader in the field of emerging pathogens. She is an expert in emerging and genotic diseases and has a special interest and passion for tropical diseases, travel medicine, malaria, and viral hemorrhagic fevers and rabies. I think she even lectured me in viral and hemorrhagic fevers. It's also exciting with diseases. And she helped set the, the malaria national treatment guidelines and has promoted the one the one the concept of one pulse by encouraging uh, veterinary services, especially those who work with, with the, the medical fraternity. She has supported the management of our viral hemorrhagic cases and outbreaks in South Africa and even helped Diagnosis of Ebola in Sierra Leone, and um, we thank you very much for you know for supporting the program there. So we really would, and we think it's, it's, it's we really would like the MRC would really like to acknowledge you and your immense contribution to public health surveillance and, and research in South Africa. And we want to thank you very much for keeping us safe. <laughs> thank you very much, Ms. Bia. Professor Lucille Bloomberg is a Deputy Director of the National Institute for Communicable Diseases of the National Health Laboratory Service and is currently Head of the Public Health Surveillance and Response Division. She is also a Medical Consultant to the Emerging Pathogens Center on Rabies and Viral Hemorrhagic Fevers. She has received a number of accolades for her work including the Southern African Society for Veterinary Epidemiology and Preventative Medicine Annual Epidemiology Prize for Contributions to Society, the Paul Harris Award in 2014, and the World Small Animal Veterinary Association One Health Award. She is registered as a specialist medical microbiologist with the HPCSA, registered through peer review as a Fellow of the Faculty of Travel Medicine of the Royal College of Medicine of Glasgow, and she's also registered through peer review as an Infectious Diseases Specialist with the College of Medicine of South Africa. Thank 
health sectors in those areas, those working in Angola, those in polio, um, and those who carry the arms in the South. So thanks very much for this really interesting talk. Um, and I can tell you, don't panic, it will all be all right. <laughs> Professor Maureen Kutsia is a medical entomologist in the field of malaria mosquito control. She's a research professor and DST-NRF research chair in medical entomology and vector control at the School of Pathology at Wirtz University. She's a member of the Malaria Policy Advisory Committee of the Global Malaria Program at the World Health Organization and member of the South African Malaria Elimination Committee at the National Department of Health. She's also the founder of the Wirtz Research Institute for Malaria at the School of Pathology at Wirtz University's Faculty of Health Sciences. Her work over the years has gained her many accolades, including a Certificate of Distinction awarded by the Council for International Congresses of Entomology in 2016, a Laureal Award for Distinguished Women Scientists of the Year in 2015, the Elston Jew Medal bestowed by the Parasitological Society of South Africa in 2014, the John Belkin Memorial Award by the American Mosquito Control Association in 2012, and the African Union Kwane Nkrumah Regional Women Scientists Award in 2011. Professor Kutsia says the training and mentoring of the next generation of medical entomologists is the only way to guarantee the ultimate aim of malaria eradication. To this end, she has trained and mentored a total of 63 postgraduates from 13 African countries in the last 25 years, 65% of whom are black and 44% are women. Many of her mentees have gone on to run their own research programs and some work for the World Health Organization or various national malaria control programs. Thank you very much. Um, thank you to the MRC um, for the 
Then it was because Professor Charles Feldman is a specialist physician and distinguished professor of pulmonology at Wurz University. His research expertise are in the field of community-acquired pneumonia and in particular pneumococcal pneumonia. His research is translational and includes both clinical and basic research activity and is mainly undertaken as part of a large multi-center international collaborations with international experts in the field of community-acquired pneumonia from all regions of the world. He's an NRFA rated scientist who was recently elected as a fellow of the American Thoracic Society, member of the Academy of Science of South Africa in 2016, and elected as a foundation fellow of the European Respiratory Society in 2014. He's also received the Premier Vice Chancellor's Research Award from Wurz in 2009. Professor Feldman has sat on several review panels for the SAMRC and was appointed onto the SAMRC board for two terms.
to thank a few individuals tonight. The first person that I actually want to thank, and I was so pleased to see him in the audience, is none other than Professor Slim Abdul Karim. And there are two reasons for that. The first reason is that when I went for the interview for the Nuffield Oxford Medical Fellowship, he was in the room. He didn't say a lot. He asked me one or two questions, but I felt comforted and I knew as I walked out of the room that I'm probably going to get this because one of us from Alan Taylor residence was, was in the room. <laughs> so Slim, you gave me the biggest break of my life. Lastly, ladies and gentlemen, there are two women that I want to acknowledge in my life. The first one is my mother, who could not be here tonight. A very remarkable woman who had five children in a period of seven years and took time off work as a nurse for 14 years to raise that brood of children. I owe my very being from her. Indeed, she is the first medical scientist I ever met because as a child, I suffered from asthma. And she used to do magic and I would become better. In the Meiosi family, you either uh, followed the health sciences trap or you became a priest. She is the reason I never became a priest because when I went to church and they said, I must trust God more than everything else, I said, it's my mother and then God. <laughs> she was, she's a great woman and I, I want to pay tribute to her. But lastly, I also want to pay tribute to my partner that I met uh, on that orientation bus organized by Aaron Matsoledi 33 years ago <laughs> on the first day at Alan Taylor residence, none other than Nontlantla Kumalo, who's provided the fuel that is essential for science. And that fuel has got three elements. The first element is love. You need love to do good science. The second element is freedom. I don't know of a woman who, gives some, who, gives, who could give someone freedom such as myself to do the work that I needed to do. But finally, you also need to have good domestic arrangements so that you can do the science well. <laughs> the message in my house is that I am the auto bank and the rest is taken care of. And Nontlantla, this is for you. And I know that as a scientist, it is time for me to give to you so that one day you can come and stand here and lift this particular gong from the Medical Research Council. Thank you very much.